really uh, defined the Christian faith in such a way that it remained kind of his <laughs> teachings remained the guidelines for um, probably about a thousand years or so. So a little bit about the life of Augustine. He was born in Tagast, which was a <laughs> modest Roman community in a river valley 40 miles from the Mediterranean coast in North Africa. His parents were of the respectable class of Roman society, but their means of support were sometimes strained. Somehow they managed to acquire a first-class education for Augustine, and although he had at least one brother and one sister, he seems to have been the only child sent off to be educated. He studied first in Tagast, then he went to Carthage, the great city of Roman Africa. After a brief stint teaching in Tagast, he returned to Carthage to teach rhetoric, the premier science for the Roman gentleman, and he was evidently very good at it. While still at Carthage, he wrote a short philosophical book aimed at displaying his own merits and in order to advance his career. Unfortunately, these writings are lost. But at the age of 28, restless and ambitious, Augustine left Africa to make his career in Rome. He taught there briefly before landing a plum job as an imperial professor of rhetoric in Milan. This was the customary residence of the emperor at the time. Milan was the de facto capital of the Western Roman Empire and the place where careers were best made. Augustine tells us that he and the many family members with him expected no less than a provincial governorship as the eventual and lucrative reward his merits. But Augustine's career ran aground in Milan. After only two years there, he resigned his teaching post, and after some soul-searching and apparent idleness, he made his way back to his native town of Tagast. There he passed the time as a cultured squire, looking after his family property, raising the son that was left him by his long-term lover, and continuing his literary pastimes. The death of that son in his adolescence left Augustine with no obligation to hand down the family property, so he disposed of it and found himself at age 36 literally pressed into service against his will, really, as a junior clergyman in the coastal city of Hippo in North Africa. His conversion and transformation were not entirely surprising. Augustine had always been a dabbler in one form or another in Christianity, and the collapse of his career at Milan was associated with an intensification of his religiosity. All of his writings from that time onward were driven by his loyalty to a particular form of Christianity, both orthodox and intellectual. His literary and intellectual abilities gave him the power to articulate his vision of Christianity in a way that set him apart from others. His unique gift was the ability to write at a high theoretical level for the most educated people and still be able to deliver sermons with fire and fierceness in a way that a less cultured audience could admire. He was made a priest at Hippo, in 391. He became bishop there four years later and spent the rest of his life in that office. Hippo was a trading city without the wealth and the culture of Carthage or Rome, and Augustine was never entirely at home there. He would travel to Carthage for several months a year to pursue church business in an environment more welcoming to his talents than that of his adopted home city. Augustine was never without controversies to fight, usually with others of his own religion. During this time, he wrote book after book attacking Manichaeism, a Christian heresy that he had embraced in his late teenage years. For the next 20 years, until the year 410, he was preoccupied with the struggle to make the true faith prevail over all others in Africa. The native African traditions were held in suspicion by Rome, and Augustine fought a relentless campaign against them with his books and sermons. By his 60th year, Augustine had built for himself a reputation as a writer to 
throughout Africa and beyond. His writings were widely circulated throughout the Mediterranean world, and in his last years he compiled a careful catalog of all of his books. In his last year he found himself and his fellow Roman citizens prisoners to an army of barbarians who had invaded the Roman Empire looking for a place to settle. Hippo, the city, fell shortly after his death, and the great city of Carthage not long after. It was not until the 6th century that Augustine's teachings were revived with support from Constantinople, which had become the new capital of the empire. But this was brought to an end in the 7th century with the Islamic invasions that permanently removed North Africa from the sphere of Christianity. Even so, the teachings of Augustine survived in his books. Besides his hundreds of homilies, which are with us today, his most notable works are The City of God and The Confessions, which is an autobiographical work. In The Confessions, Augustine searches for his own identity after coming to believe in the presence of God. His most famous quote comes from that book in the following paragraph which is written as a prayer. It says, O oh God, man is but a small piece of your creation, yet man desires to praise you. A human being bearing his mortality, carrying with him the witness of his sins. Nevertheless, to praise you is the desire of man, a little piece of your creation. You stir man to take pleasure in praising you, because you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest 